Well, hello everyone. This is Carrie back with How to Homeschool My Child, and we are here two days after Christmas. That's right. Actually, I shouldn't even be here live because today was the day we were going to do my big, our big Beck family Christmas. The kids were all coming. My parents were coming. My sister was coming. Oh, it's just going to be great until COVID hit. <laughs> Yeah, my son-in-law got COVID last week, and so we are all on our own today. We're going to try to get together next weekend or the following <coughs> weekend. And there went my entire basket that I prepared for this video. Oh, well. Well, I will grab it in just a minute. So, what I want to do today is talk to you about one simple activity you can do that I can guarantee you will just simplify your homeschool. Why can I say that? Because that's what it did for me. Now, if you are listening here, I would love it if you would just leave us uh, a comment right now with what is the one thing that you do to try to simplify and calm everything down or what's your biggest question? about how do we simplify homeschool. Leave a comment here because I would really love to hear from you. Now, what we want to do today then is talk about what is this one activity. I will tell you right now, it has to do with encouraging our kids to love learning because when they love to learn, it's a lot easier and it simplifies our life and we're not always butting heads with them, right? The other thing, why do we even want to encourage a love of learning? Because one, it does simplify our life. Two, we will create kids that are lifetime learners. They will want to learn for a lifetime. Also, when we do that and we create lifetime learners, then we are going to raise our kids to be leaders, leaders who influence those around them, leaders who have an impact on those around them. Now, I'm not saying they're the President of the United States, but more than likely, your children will be moms and dads, and they will have a huge influence on their children. They will have a huge impact on human beings, the ones that live in their house. How will they lead? How are you leading? We'll talk about that later in a few weeks. But really, we want to raise our kids to love learning so that they are lifetime learners. I will tell you right now that leaders have bigger libraries than they do TVs because they are learning every single day. So what is this one simple activity that you can do? I call it family time. And we're gonna, it's one hour every morning that we did. Right, well, when right after breakfast, they went off and got dressed and, and brushed their teeth and practiced the piano. And then they came back to the living room, which is right on the other side of that room. We're gonna talk about the first 30 minutes and the last 30 minutes. But we're gonna start with the last 30 minutes because I think the last 30 minutes are imperative for any, any homeschool family. What did we do the last 30 minutes of our family time? We read aloud for 30 minutes because if we can read and get our kids to enter into other places, other events, other worlds, then we can encourage them to love learning. And if they love learning, it will simplify your life because you're not constantly bang, 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 trying to deal with them. So what did we do with this read aloud time? I will tell you right now that I rotated books. I did not read the same type of book. Hunter loved anything with water. So every once in a while we would read Swiss Family Robinson or Robinson Crusoe. Gentry would listen to anything. Ashley loved history. She loved science too. So if we were reading a biography about a scientist and I wanted to give them a well-rounded read aloud time, real rounded education. So we, tr I tried to alternate the types of books that my kids like so that everyone was interested. If they weren't interested in one book, I would bribe them by saying, oh, the next book is about water. Just wait, you're gonna love it. Um, the other thing I did is I did not analyze these books. I didn't make it a reading assignment. I didn't make it a book assignment. It was a time for us to enjoy being a family and enjoy the book, enter into that world, and let our kids love books and love learning about whatever that topic was. Now, you could use it as narration. 
You could use it as copy work, but that is after your read aloud time. So the one simple activity I've already mentioned is family time. The last 30 minutes of family time is read aloud. And that should be a time that you are building relationships. Now let me tell you something. I did not expect my children to sit on the couch like perfect little angels and listen to me. Oh my gosh, I can't even do that when Steve would read aloud. I had baskets of art supplies. I had baskets of Legos. I had journals, um, art journals that they could draw in. Once or twice a week, we had laundry, gave their hands something to do, and then their ears would listen better. So really, twice a week, at the very beginning we of our read aloud time, we were folding laundry. Because I believe, and for, at least for me, when my hands are busy, my ears listen better. I know that when I am driving, I listen better. And I can still remember, I don't know about you, I can still remember when I heard a song for the first time and where I was on the road. Or if I were listening to a sermon, there's a sermon I still can remember, the gas station on the way to Ashley's, that I remember they were talking about forgiveness. And when I pass that gas station, I will still think about forgiveness because I had something to do. So I never expected my kids to be perfect little angels. Now, we are going to now move. So family time is the one simple activity. Part of that is reading aloud. Look, what did we do during all this time? Now, before we move on, if you're just now catching us, leave a comment about how do you simplify homeschool or what's your biggest question about simplifying homeschool. And I'm going to grab my basket that just went kaploop and fell over with all my props that I was going to show you. Give me about 10 seconds. Okay. Here is my basket. It probably doesn't look as good as I wanted it to a few minutes ago, but it fell over in the introduction. Before I move to the first 30 minutes, I just want to show you. This is the book that I'm reading right now to my grand girls, The Hundred Dresses. I don't get to read to them. I probably should figure out a way to get on the phone and do it. I read it to them the Monday before Thanksgiving because I spent all day, and we read about a third of it. And then Christmas Day, I was getting ready to leave, and they wanted me to read to them again. And what did, I didn't know what they would say. I had the book with me. Read the hundred dresses. We want to hear about the hundred dresses. So we went upstairs. We read about another third of it. And so now the next time we're together, we'll probably finish this book. I'm really surprised that a four- and a seven-year-old from a time in November to December and hopefully in Jan or actually yeah first of January when they come because they're not here today because someone has COVID anyway uh, we will finish this book it's a great read aloud book look Newberry Honor book anyway if you've got girls that are in that four to eight year old it's a great book I actually discovered it through sunlight so what are we going to talk about when we talk about um, that first 30 minutes? Okay, the first thing that I would include is poetry. I will tell you the reason I included poetry is because I didn't like poetry. And I wanted my kids to like poetry or at least have a better attitude about it. So in our basket right here are, we had more than this, but here are two of the books. And y'all have heard me talk about them. It's going to fall again. All right, it's Shel Silverstein, Where the Sidewalk Ends, and A Light in the Attic. And they could pick whatever poem they wanted, and every single day, they, the first thing they did, each one of them took a turn, opening to their, their, um, to their poem, and then reading it out loud. I'm going to see if the Band-Aid is in here. Not in this one. Let's just see. Maybe it's in this one. The Band-Aid, I think it was the Band-Aid. Oh my gosh, they were reading that all the time. I guess it was their favorite thing. Band-Aids, page 140. They just thought it was hilarious. And so at least once a month, one of them, I have a Band-Aid on my finger, one on my knee and one on my nose, one on my heel and two on my shoulder, three on my elbow and one on my ankle. And it continues on and on. This is poetry and they enjoyed it. Now, I forgot to grab the beautiful book over there, Favorite Poems Old and New. You see, the kids would read the fun, funny books. I would read a more serious one. And we would take a few minutes. This took five minutes max out of that 30 minutes. So five minutes. They'd each take a turn. Why did we do this? One, they had practiced reading something aloud, enunciating. And if we didn't understand them, 
we'd say, hey, let's read that again. We didn't make a big deal about it. Hey, could you read that again? We didn't quite understand everything. And slow down or something like that. Then I would read a more serious one. Now, we didn't analyze the serious ones all the time, but maybe once a week we'd talk about what that meant. So the first thing in our family time was poetry. The next thing that we would do here is some type of music. All right? That was either listening to music or I would get on the piano, and I'm not the greatest pianist. I would pull out our hymns, and every day for a week, angels, well, this is Christmas, aren't we lucky? Angels we have heard on high. Maybe we would sing it, and we would sing all four stanzas. Did we analyze it and talk about it? No, we just enjoyed it. And I believe that God uses just that repetitiveness to teach us things. Now, there were times when we studied the Reformation, we would sing a song by Martin Luther. But I wanted my kids to know hymns on top of all the great praise songs we were singing. Because at the time, my church did not sing um, hymns. So part of our family time was singing hymns. The other thing I would, we did is we would listen to classical kids. Um, and I want to tell you right now, when I talk about this first 30 minutes, and I'm listing a bunch of stuff, that does not mean that every day we did every single one of these things. It means that maybe for a month we worked on hymns. Maybe for the next month we were studying Beethoven, and we listened to Beethoven. I don't have a Beethoven book here. So it was whatever I was feeling a need for, and that's what simplified us, because I didn't have to do music every day for the rest of my life. We did do poetry every day. That was just me. We had already done Bible devotions at breakfast time, but we would do music. Another thing that we would do is memory work. And so we might listen to the um, Veritas Press um, Old Testament song and practice the order of the Old Testament. Or we may practice our memory verse for the week and just take three or four minutes and let everyone take a turn or fight or just keep repeating it till we all memorize that Bible verse but we did some sort of memory work and so that would be something else again did we do all of this every day no then the next thing we would do and this is just because I love it is art appreciation did I do art every single day no but let me show you a few things that we did Oh, but let's go back to memory work I use songs a lot grammar songs I make my kids learn the the direct object song. To this day, they know the direct object song because they couldn't stand it. And they would tell me, Mom, I can't get that song out of my head. And I'm thinking, bingo, we got it down. And they will tell you, a direct object receives the action of the verb because they learned that song. And they, it was just an easy way to get them to learn something. Now, what's in here? Oh, art. So here's one on Rembrandt. Maybe we were going to study Rembrandt for the month. Does that mean we would read this whole book? No, we just turn to the next page. This is the equestrian portrait. I would read this. Maybe we would talk about this. And that was it. And then maybe the next day we would read this and talk about that painting. And maybe even talk about how dark his stuff is as opposed to light. Another book that we would use is this Come Look With Me series. This is The Artist at Work. I'm just going to open to a page. All right, this is Turner's uh, Burning of the Houses of Parliament. We would look at that picture. I would maybe read it. It depends on the age of the kids. This is a little bit about him. and it. But then here are four questions you can ask. You don't even have to do every question every day. Maybe you just do one question a day. It's not hard. But let me tell you, all of a sudden, you're doing art. If you sing, you're doing music. If you're memorizing, you're doing Bible or grammar or whatever. Very simple activities. We're not having to go get textbooks. We just go and get real books. Now, this tied in history and um, art. It is waiting for Filippo, or Filippo, and he uh, built the dome here, um, Brun Filippo Brunicelli. And I like it because we I would never read this whole book at one time, but we might read one page and then look at every page has, well, not every page, that one doesn't. But this one talks about columns and stuff. But then we have a pop-up here. And so we could talk about each one of these. And then we have the dome and how he built the dome. Bruno Shelley. And then you can open it up and look at all the parts. And it's all numbered. It's just a fun way to learn about art, to learn about math, to learn about history and what was going on back then. Now, I, did, I normally don't include this. 
But another thing that we would do every once in a while, maybe we weren't doing music, we weren't doing art, we did our poetry, we weren't doing any of that. Here's what we did. We learned math. Oh, your kids are probably, well, if you had my two daughters, you'd be, they'd be going, oh, really, Mom, we're going to do math? Here's how I did it. I would read books like mathematicians are people too. And we come here to, well, let me find one. The blind man who could see, Euler. And then we would learn about him. He was a Swiss mathematician on calculus. And we would read their story. Hunter actually, when we read the book, the story here in Thales, he learned about ratios because of the story here. A few other math story books would be this. I hate mathematics. Well, if you have children, my daughters, that's what they would have done. Um, but this isn't story so much as it's a short little activity maybe you could do. And then the next day, maybe you do this one on riddles or more riddles. Just something fun to encourage them. My basket is becoming empty now because I have used all the books. But then another one, I didn't find this when my kids were younger, but I think it would be really great. Girls think of everything. Stories of ingenious inventions by women. And so here is Ruth Wakefield, the chocolate chip cookie inventor. And it tells her story. That would be cool. Uh, Stephanie Quolick, Kevlar. So these are more modern time inventions. Let's see where we are. Oh, that's the whiteout one. I thought that, I've read that story before. Betty Nesmith Graham invented liquid paper. Y'all may be too young to know what liquid paper is, but basically when you were typing, you used to have to use this eraser. Then she invented liquid paper and you would just white it out, blow on it, and put your paper back in, and then type back in. That was back in the old days when you had a typewriter and not a computer that you could just change on the computer. So your kids could learn a lot because life was not like computers like it is today. So those are a few things. The one thing I have left out that we did do on a regular basis, not every month, not every week, but we would do Bible study. We did one on character of God. And so maybe for a week, we would, or not every week, maybe once a week for four weeks we would talk about that Bible study. And the other days, the kids were working on that Bible study. We would do the um, inductive Bible studies for kids. There was a Jonah one, I remember, but there's about I don't five or six of them. And I would just alternate through those. And it gave my kids the tools of studying the Bible on their own. Now, I did not do that when they were five. Most of the time, they had to be about eight or up to be able to use that. But they would work through the Bible study that week and then just like you go to a Bible study, we'd all get together and we would talk about that as well. And then we would go over it. So let me add these two and then we'll go over them. So what did we do? This one activity is family time. The first 30 minutes, poetry or, I'm not saying and, or music or memory work or art or math or Bible. And I forgot one, history. Sometimes, once a week, we may just talk about whatever we're studying in history at that time. Because I didn't, I didn't talk to them about history every day. They read history every day. They worked on history independently. But about once a week, we would talk about it. So there's a large variety of things. It's so much easier just to say, hey, I'm going to spend 30 minutes. I'm going to pick up whatever I need to. Whatever we have missed the week before, we pick up in family time the next week, maybe. Then the last 30 minutes was always, always, always read aloud. Sometimes it was more than 30 minutes. But usually, generally speaking, family time was an hour. It was one activity we did every day, and we started our day with this. Why did we do this? Right here. First, we just started with read aloud. Because the first year I homeschooled, I fell asleep reading aloud because we would read aloud after lunch. Actually, I did the same thing with my granddaughters the last two times when I was reading that book, um, well, wherever it is, 100 Dresses. And I was like, this is not a deja vu. I'm falling asleep after lunchtime because I get tired. But if I would read at 8 or 9 in the morning, I was wide awake. And I could be excited and show them that reading was a wonderful adventure. So the number one reason I started family time was to read aloud. Because I believe it's one of the best ways our kids can learn. If you don't do any of this other stuff, always read aloud at least 30 minutes, maybe more, of a day. And then the first 30 minutes were all just a variety of things depending on what we needed to do. I will say that by about 6th or 8th grade, we sort of quit doing the poetry and we spent a little bit more time on history during this time. That was just for us. You need to do what works for you. 
Now, I have a free PDF that you can get, and it will give you the parts of all of this, and you can fill it out and get started for what are you going to do in January. The link is in the description, howtohomeschoolmychild.com slash video, because it is part of a three-part video course and how to simplify your homeschool. And number two, day two, video two, is about family time. And so I actually went into a little bit more detail than I usually do. So that would be something. Wonderful book we read this year. Thank you, Sky, about 100 dresses. I'm doing those for the second time. We love them. I need to do this, Denise. Thank you. Well, let me tell you, the other thing that's in the description is in about two weeks, I am doing something brand new, and I am so excited about it. It is our five-day homeschool planning boot camp. We're doing it first of January so that you can plan out the rest of your semester. Does that mean you're going to write all the lesson plans for every week? No, but you are going to get the big picture. You're going to be planned in schedule, planned in love of learning. You're going to plan some of this family time. You're going to plan how do you get your kids to think for themselves. You're going to have how do we incorporate fun learning. Those are some of the things that we will be planning in our homeschool boot camp. And you can find that at howtohomeschoolmychild.com slash homeschool planning pretty simple. All right, so that's what we have. If y'all have any questions, please leave them in the um, comments. I'd be happy to follow them. Otherwise, I just would really encourage you as you think about the coming year, think about adding this one activity, one hour a day. And you may be going, I can't, I can't suck out. I can't take out one hour. I'm going to tell you it is well worth every moment. And the thing is, you're including subjects that you've never been able to get to in the first place. And this, my friend, is probably the most important thing I ever did in homeschool, is reading aloud. We read aloud first thing in the morning, and most evenings Steve would read aloud to the kids. At breakfast, we would read our Bible aloud, telling you this is the most important thing I would ever encourage someone to do. If this is all you ever got done that day, it would be amazing. So I highly encourage you. That's why I started with the last 30 minutes, read aloud. Um, and then these are just a variety of things that you could do during those first 30 minutes. Poetry, music, memory work, art, math, Bible, history, sort of a hodgepodge of things. Thanks so much for spending time with me. I am Carrie Beck, How to Homeschool My Child. I will talk to you all later. Have a great day.